guys, so this video is very different. The first one I'm doing on my channel, I decided to record myself creating and knitting a sweater. I've been knitting sweaters since April 2021, knitting and crocheting. I tend to do way more with crochet, but I really like how the knit knitted stuff turns out. So I've kind of self-taught myself, not the best techniques. I'm sure you can find people that are much, much better at it than I am. But I wanted to show you guys how I knit a sweater. The one that I'm going to be showcasing for you guys today is this one, which is this little cardigan. It is kind of chunky. I don't know if I can like fit in frame. It's kind of chunky. It's a thicker yarn. Let me know if you want more crochet, knitting tutorials. I can definitely do more. I love to do it. It's kind of a hobby passion project of mine and I would be more than happy to film more of these in the future. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my crochet knit Instagram, there's something in my eye, is stitched by Chris. So I will leave it here if you want to follow me there. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching and let's just go ahead and get started. So just showing you guys what products you'll need to create the sweater. I have two types of the round knitting needles. So these are both eight millimeters. You can also use 10 or nine millimeters. I think either of those would work. I just happen to have the eight, so that's what I'm using. And I have one that's about, it's 30 centimeters long, and then one that's 60. This one you'll need when you do the button band, and then you can pretty much do the rest of the sweater using the 30 centimeter round. You need some darndine needles. A uh, measuring tape of some sort, uh, scissors, and then the yarn. So the yarn that I'm using in today's video is from Lion Brand, and it's their Wool Ease yarn. I'm pretty sure at this moment all the supplies you're gonna need. So you're gonna want to start by creating a slip knot, and you want to. I don't know what type of cast on this is called, but I start by taking a really long length of the yarn. I'm just gonna create the slip knot right here. And as you can tell, like I have a lot of yarn on one end and you kind of have to play around with it. You might have to redo it a bunch of times to see if you have the right length. It is a bit trial and error. So anyways, I want to take one of the knitting needles and just tighten that knot around the needle. The end yarn is around my index and the yarn attached to the ball is around my thumb. And then how I cast on is I loop around my thumb like this, and then I pull the other yarn through that loop. I'll do it again, so grab the yarn that's around my thumb and then pull the other yarn through that. And the number of times that you do do this cast on is going to depend on how long you want the back panel to be. So for me, I'm gonna do about 50, 50 loops for my back panel and that would probably get me to about 25 inches along the back but it really will depend on yourself, what size you're making your sweater. For this sweater, I don't want it to be too bulky, um, like too loose around the back, so I'm gonna do 50 loops. Meet you guys back once I'm done 50 of these. I now have 50 loops on my needles. Whenever you have the desired number of loops, you're gonna start the bottom ribbing. So what I'm gonna do is actually flip my, my needle and my work around. And so the reason why I had said you wanna kind of measure well, you don't even need to measure, but you just got to kind of figure out how far down the yarn you need to start to do that initial slip knot. And the reason is because you do want to have quite a substantial length of leftover yarn because you, you don't want it to be too short. So it does take a little bit of trial error to make sure you have enough yarn and not too much leftover on the end. So this spare yarn, one that is not attached to the rest of the yarn, it's just the end. You just want to leave that hanging and make sure you don't work with this one. So kind of hold it out of the way. We want to work with the yarn that is attached to the ball. So I kind of just hold that leftover yarn with my hand, my left hand, and then I'm going to take my right hand and my needle and I'm going to slip that needle behind or like underneath the needle that has the chains. So again, you just kind of slip it underneath that. And then you're going to take the yarn that is attached to the ball of yarn and you're going to loop it around the back needle. So the one that we just inserted. So you loop it around and then you pull it through that loop. So now you have the loop 
on the right needle. So I'll just show you guys that again. So again, you insert your right needle underneath the left. You grab your working yarn and you pull it behind or loop it around the right needle and then you pull that right needle and the yarn through the loop. And then you're gonna just push that off the left needle. So now the loop, if you can tell, it's on this right needle. Because we're doing the ribbing, you want to actually take that working yarn and flip it to the front. So it's kind of in between your two needles and it's the front. So how I like to do the ribbing is I do one regular knit chain and then I do, I don't even know if they're called chains. I feel like I always get confused with crochet, but you do one regular knit and then you do a purl knit. So to do a purl knit, take your right needle again, but you slip it instead of going like behind like this we did before, you're actually going to slip it in front of the left needle. And then you take the working yarn and you loop it around the right. And again, you push it through so now, and you slip it off. So now the loops are on your right needle. And then you wanna always make sure that you flip your yarn to the other side when you're doing the knit. So we alternate between knit and then purl and then knit and purl. So this is the knit that we are on now. So again, you slip it underneath the left needle, put that working yarn around the right, slip the right needle with the yarn through the left and then slip it off. So now your loop is on the right needle. And then because the next one's purl, flip your working yarn to the front and now you're doing a purl knit. So slip in front of the left needle and loop around that, slip it off. You kind of have to keep track, at least for the beginning, when I first started knitting, I was so confused between like the pearls and the knits and I couldn't keep track. You just kind of have to remember which one you're on. So if you're doing a purl knit, versus a regular knit stitch. Just make sure that you're not losing track of that. And always make sure that you're flipping that yarn to the front whenever you are doing a purl knit like this one. And that you flip it back to the back like the regular way when you're doing the knit stitch. So I'm gonna continue this pattern all the way until I get to the end of this chain. Okay, so I'm just getting to the end. I just have four more stitches to do. The last one will be a purl because we had an even number of stitches. I do recommend you start with an even number of loops. So I did 50 and I think that's the best way to do it. So now that all of your loops are on the right needle and your left needle has nothing on it, that becomes your working needle. So I'm going to flip my work around again and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So now you can kind of see that there are just regular knits and then there's purl, regular knits, purl. And the pearls, I don't know if you can see them, but they have these little like loops that go horizontal and then the regular knit ones don't. So you always know the ones that have the little horizontal loop, those are the purl ones. I'm gonna start this row with a regular knit. So slip the right needle underneath the left. Make sure you pull that a bit tight so that it's not slipping off. Loop around the needle and then pull it under and then slip it off. And again, you can kind of tighten it as you go so it's not slippy. And then put the working yarn in the front, so between the two needles, and this is a purl stitch. So you go in front of the left needle, loop around, and you kind of pull it and slip it off towards the back. You're gonna continue this until you get to the very end of the row. And I don't know if it's starting to become obvious yet because we only have two rows, but you're gonna to start to see the stitching coming together. So you're gonna see the regular knits and then the pearls in between the bars of knits. So I wanna continue this to the end of this row and then I'll meet you guys back once I complete this row. And then we're gonna do, I believe, five more, five of these rows. I think I've done five before and I liked the length of it, but it's really up to you how long you want the ribbing to be. Um, I think with this kind of chunkier yarn, five was like a good length. So I'm probably gonna do five again for this sweater. Okay, so I ended up just going through and finishing off five rib knits rows so this is what the ribbing looks like it's about probably like an inch and a half i would say in length so again it's totally up to you how long you want to make the ribbing but i'm going to finish off the last four here and then start the actual body of the back panel with you guys so you can see how it is it gets really easy from this point on i always find like the ribbing 
is the hardest part because you actually have to like pay attention and then when you're doing the rest of it it's not like it's kind of mindless so just finishing off the last one which should always be a pearl i'm going to flip my work so one thing to note is what is the back like oh sorry what is the inside of the ribbing and what's the outside so the one that looks like it's kind of messy and it looks like it's alternating that should be the inside of your work and then the outside the one that you want people to see when you're wearing the sweater should be this nice kind of spirally edge. When I'm doing the inside of the sweater, you should always be working in pearl stitches. And then for the body, you do one pearl row and then one knit row. One pearl row, one knit. So you're just alternating. So to start the pearl row, you have to stick your right needle in front of the left needle. And then you wrap the working yarn around your right needle and then you push it underneath and then slip it off and then again you kind of have to tighten this as you go otherwise it's going to be kind of tricky to work on so again you slip in front of the left needle yarn around the right needle slip that right needle with the yarn around it underneath and then slip it off so you're going to continue with the purl row all the way across all 50 loops i should have mentioned that whether you start with a purl row or a knit row, it depends on how many ribbing rows you did. So because I did five, I started with the purl row. If I had done six, I would have started with the knit row. And again, you can just tell what you're starting with by looking at the bottom edge to see if you're working on the inside or the outside of the sweater. Now that the purl row is done, I'm gonna flip my work and we're gonna start the next row. And you know you're on the knit row because this is the front, or the, not the front, I should say the exterior of the sweater. This is the side that people will see. It's the outside of the sweater because you've got this nice spirally edge at the bottom. So whenever you're on the spirally edge side, that is when you're doing the regular knit row. I like doing the knit rows more because they're just a little easier, but again, take your right needle, slip it through the loop, the first loop but underneath the left needle then grab the working yarn wrap it around the right needle push the right needle with that yarn through and then slip that loop off so this entire row will be a knit row okay so i did a couple more rows off camera because i figured i want to show you guys what it was starting to look like before i just take this whole back panel off camera this is the outside of the sweater well this will be the outside so you'll notice it has those really beautiful v's the regular you know common knit that you see and then on the back side you have the pearls so these are the this is going to be the inside of the sweater i'm going to continue working on this for until the length is about i think I'm gonna go for like about 19 inches, maybe even 18. I kind of want it to be a little bit more cropped because this is more for spring, but you can really customize it to whatever you feel comfortable with. You just continue that pattern, pearls, knits, pearls, knits, all the way until you get the back panel to the desired length. Once I get to my desired length, I'll jump back on and I'll show you guys how to cast off. So yeah, that is the back panel. I'll be back in a sec when it is completed probably in a week my time realistically but yeah i'll see you guys soon so i have done about um probably 12 inches of the back panel but i wanted to just show you guys how to start a new ball of yarn because i'm getting towards the end so when you have about like this much yarn left try and keep it quite long because you do you don't want to end up with too short of leftover yarn to weave in at the end so there's a couple ways to start the new ball of yarn I'm going to connect it to the new yarn by just laying it out beside it so you're gonna start knitting with two strands of yarn and you want to make sure you have a substantial amount at the other end i always do things a bit generously when it comes to this so i'm going to probably use about 10 inches you're just going to knit both of these strands together and it's the same thing like you're just going to knit the same way but you're going to wrap both of the ends or both yarns i should say together when you are knitting it's going to be a little bit bulkier in this section but you don't notice it too much once the work is complete you're just going to keep knitting until you have a reasonable length of tail left over from the old yarn so you don't want to knit it 
all the way so that you don't have a tail left. You want to leave a little bit of a tail, which I'll show you in a sec. I didn't actually count how many loops I did or how many stitches I did, but there's about this much left, which is about maybe eight inches, nine inches left of the old yarn. And then this strand is the new ball. You're going to have these two ends left over. One is from the new ball of yarn and then one is from the old ball of yarn and you're just going to leave them hanging for now. Continue on with your work and then at the very end you'll be able to just weave in those ends and secure them. I wanted to show you guys how to cast off. This is the back panel. Sorry, it's like really hard to show you the whole sweater, um, but this is the back panel basically complete. It is about 18 inches in length, so it's going to be more of a cropped sweater but like I said at the beginning I kind of wanted it to be cropped because it's going to be ready in time for spring so I didn't need anything super heavy duty but also count all of the little V's so you have an exact number of the rows I'm not gonna bother because I am too lazy to do that I have done that in the past where I'll actually count it if I want it to be exact but because this is for myself it's just a sweater that I'm making for myself I don't really care if it's if I don't know the exact number of rows so anyways I am ready to cast off at this point I will insert like I'm doing a regular knit I like to end on a knit row so I just completed a purl row and now I'm doing a knit row I want to just knit one slip that off and now is when you're going to start casting off so I want to insert my right needle again behind my left as if I'm doing a regular knit well I am actually so do a regular knit slip it off and now you'll notice you'll have these two loops on your chain so to cast off you're going to insert your left needle just like in front of the first loop you're going to make sure that loop is on the left needle and you want to pull the working yarn taut so that it doesn't slip off i always mess it up and get it it always slips off on me but you're basically going to pull that first loop that you have on your left needle and you're going to slip it oops i'm not even in camera you're going to slip it off so that you now only have the second loop on your right needle you're going to do the next loop as if it's a regular knit so regular knit and then you're going to take the first loop slip your right sorry your left needle just on top of the right needle and around that loop and you're going to slip your left needle off your right so now you're left with just one loop on the right i find if you do these final loops a little looser it is it ends up like better at the end i don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to that but that's just what i've discovered and then for the last one you do it normal like as normal so again you just do a regular knit it's really hard to film and do this at the same time and then you're going to do the same thing you're going to wrap around the second last loop and slip the first loop through it and then you should end up with just one loop on your needle so at this point you can give yourself a fairly long tail like i wouldn't be super stingy on the tail and also sometimes i like to use this end to seam in the front panel so i'm actually going to leave a really long tail with a pair of scissors make sure they're sharp get rid of the needle and you want to just pull that working or the the end yarn now I guess through and then you can kind of tighten it off and that should complete the casting off so it's all curled up on the edge that always happens whenever I knit I don't know if there was a way to prevent it but it's all going to work out once you um, attach the front and the back piece but yeah that's the back panel done we're starting on the front panels I've already cast it on, cast it on so what you need to do for the front panel is make sure that it's about a third of the size of the back panel so for the back panel i did 50 loops like i started with 50 stitches for the front panel i think i'm going to do 16 stitches because that's almost a third my back panel ended up being about 21 inches in width and then 18 and a half inches in length so this should ideally be a third of the 21 inches. I just cast it on like I did 
with the back panel. It's the same steps as the back panel. I've just flipped my work. Make sure you're using the ball of yarn to stitch with, not the excess yarn. You just have to remember that your ribbing should be the exact same length and width as your, well width I guess, as your back panel. So I did five rows of ribbing and I'm gonna do five rows of ribbing for the front panels as well. Now you're just gonna repeat the exact same pattern that you did with the back panel. One row of purl stitches, then when I flip my work, I'm gonna do a row of knit stitches. So yeah, you're just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm not gonna show it on camera because it's all the exact same as the back panel, but yeah, purl, knit, purl, knit, repeat rows, and then you wanna make sure that the final length is the same length as your back panel. Oh yeah, so obviously there's two front panels, so you're gonna have to do this whole process for the front panel twice. So I will probably come back once I'm done both of the front panels and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I just finished both of the front panels and these look so funny because they look so skinny because they always like curl up, but they're actually about seven inches in width, which is like pretty much exactly a third of the back leg. Just cast it off the exact same way that I did for the back panel, so I didn't bother showing it to you guys. But next step for me, now that I've got three of the panels done are gonna be the sleeves. So we are about to start on the sleeves and I do the sleeves not in the round. I have done sleeves in the round before as well. I started with just 20 loops or 20 chains and it really will depend on the size of your wrist and your hand and how um, wide you wanna make the sleeve cuffs. I just went with 20 because that's been working for me and now I'm gonna do same thing as I did before with the other, the front and the back panels, I'm gonna do five rows of ribbing. And then the sleeves are slightly different than the front and the back panels because you do wanna increase. So I will show you guys how I start increasing once I finish the ribbing. I'm on the inside end of the sleeve again. I'm gonna complete one row of purl stitches because I'm on the inside end. And you always wanna start um, with one row of no increases. Okay, so that is the first purl row complete and now you can start the knit increasing. So the way I do it is I'm not sure it's the correct method. I think I'm probably doing something wrong, but it's just the way that I've, I guess, taught myself how to do it and I, I don't think it's the correct way, so I'm not I'm not saying that like you should do it this way. It's just the way that I am going to start the increases. It's called like a knit front back increase. So what I like to do is knit three, so one, two, three, and then when I'm done the third one, I'm gonna do a knit front back increase. And then one, two, three, front back increase. Regular knits, because I'm on the outside of the sleeve, so that's knit one. Knit two, knit three. So once you've knit three, now it's going to be the knit front back. This is really hard, at least I thought it was really hard and that's probably why I learned it incorrectly. So again, you might not want to follow my lead here, but you basically start by knitting as if you are doing a regular knit row. So you loop around. If I were to do a regular stitch, I would just you know push this off I would push it off the left needle, but instead I'm gonna grab my right needle, pull it around so it's on the back end, and then slip it through the back loop. Well, the back of the loop. So now it's behind the left needle, and then I'm gonna do wrap the working yarn around it. If I can show you guys properly here. Wrap the working yarn around it, and then slip the working yarn through. And now you can push off. So basically all you did was add another stitch. So remember we did knit one, two, three, and then this would have been our fourth, but we ended up with two because of the front back stitch. So I'll do it again. One, knit two, knit three, and here the next one is going to be the front back increase. So again, you knit as if you're doing it regularly pull through, but instead of slipping off, you take that right needle, push it behind, 
and then slip it through the loop on the back end here and then regular knit pull that over and slip it under and then pull it out so now you ended up with two so again it's knit one knit two knit three and here is the front back increase on this loop. So I'm going to knit regularly, loop it around the back end, and knit again. So there you go, the increase, and then knit one, knit two, knit three, and then here's the increase. Now, because the last one is just a single loop, I'm just gonna knit one because I don't want to increase on this last one. So I'm just gonna do a regular knit. So you technically knit four at the end. So now you should be at 24 loops for the sleeve. Remember we started out with 20, now we're at 24. So I'm gonna flip my work back end on the inside of the sleeve. I wanna just do a row of pearls all the way across, no increase. So you only increase on the side where you're doing the regular knits, like the outside of the sleeve. I wanna do that off camera and then I'll be back to show you the next row. I wanna do the same thing, I think. So I wanna do one, two, three, and then increase. And again, I'm ending on just one. So instead of doing the knit increase at the end, I'm just gonna do one regular knit. So at this point, um, after two rows of the increases, I'm at 29 loops. So I want to do a purl row since I'm going to be working on the back end. So just one regular purl row for the inside. And then I'm not sure if I want to do another row of one, two, three increase or maybe do one, two, three, four, five, six increase. I want to just kind of do some math off camera and figure out what I think is going to be the best fit. But you can basically keep increasing for as long as you want or as long as like the length of the sleeve is the width that you want it. So remember that this will be folded in half because we're going to be seaming it along the edge here. So keep that in mind as well as you're doing out your measurements. But you just want to, you can pretty much increase as many rows as you want. Um, I usually do three rows of increases and then I leave it. I have decided that I'm going to do one more row of knit three increase. That should take me to the number of loops that I want it to be at for the sleeve. I'm gonna do that for the whole row. I don't think I'm gonna show you guys again. I'll just pop back on when I'm at the end. At this point, you're basically done the increases for the sleeve. So I am at 36 loops. Once you've reached the desired width of the sleeve, you're just gonna do regular knit pearl rows. So I'm going to actually be doing a row of pearls and then I'm going to do a row of knits. So you're just going to keep doing pearl rows and then knit rows until your sleeve length is the length that you want it to be. So it's just regular, no increases from this point on. It's going to be the exact same thing that you did with the front panels and the back panels. So it's actually kind of easy. You really only have to pay attention when you're doing the increase rows and then it's like mindless knitting. I would recommend that you write down exactly everything, like stepwise, how many loops you started with, how many rows of increases, because you wanna make sure that the sleeves are the same so that you're doing the exact same thing you did with your first sleeve as you are on your second sleeve. So I recommend just writing it down so that they're identical. But yeah, remember to do this whole process twice for the right and the left sleeve and then you are good to go. The sleeves are done. They are approximately 18 inches in length. It's curling up a bit at the top and then it is about 15 inches in width and don't forget that these are going to get folded over and seamed together on the end so they look more like that. I actually counted the rows. I ended up counting from, I like I put a marker on where I stopped doing the increase row so I just marked it and then from this marker on like the regular just normal knit no increase there was 59 rows and the reason I counted each of these rows is just because I wanted both sides to be the exact same anyway those are the sleeves done so the next step is going to be to seam 
the sweater together. This looks so funny, but I basically have laid the sweater out. You can kind of see where we're gonna start seaming. It looks so weird like this because it's all curled up, but you get the idea. I absolutely hate seaming sweaters together. It's my least favorite part of everything besides seaming in the ends. Um, seaming the sweater together is the worst. This is how I kind of just like to start, but I start by seaming the front panels at the top together on both sides. I will seam the sleeves to the shoulder parts on both sides and then I will finish by seaming along the side and then the arm. So like the arm will be the last thing to seam. What I'm gonna start with is the right side of the sweater and I'm going to start by taking, you know, that scrap bit of yarn that we left on the back panel. I'm gonna use this to seam the two pieces together. That's why I like to leave longer strands of yarn at the end because I like to use it to seam. So you have the yarn attached here and you have these two ends that you want to attach. So I wanna get it from the very, very edge so that I'm not missing anything. And how I like to seam is, I kind of do it differently depending on what part I'm actually seaming together, but I like to take my darndy needle. So if it's attached to the back panel, I'm gonna start by going through the front panel and just underneath the stitch like that, like underneath that first stitch. And then I will pull the yarn through. And then I'm gonna go in and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take my darning needle and go through the stitch on the back panel, like the very top stitch. Basically going to do that until you get to the end of the front panel. You have to kind of pull it tight so it's not visible, but yeah, I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. Okay, so I've finished seaming this together. So you, as, you, as you can see, when you're doing the top panel, it kind of looks like, like you're doing the both, I guess the top or the casting off of each panel. It kind of has this like dip, I guess, this little groove, the way it is seamed together. I'm just gonna leave the end here hanging off. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now that this is connected, I'm gonna just attach the front panel to the other side in the exact same way. Okay, so I actually already did one of the sleeves because uh, I just wanted to like, you know, do it, do one for myself before I go and do the other one on camera, which is good because I kind of messed this up a little bit and I didn't totally have the sleeve centered when I was, sorry, if you can see it. I didn't totally have the sleeve centered when I was stitching it on. First thing that you wanna do is grab a stitch marker and I'm gonna fold the sleeve exactly in half. This is probably kind of where I always mess up is like folding it exactly in half. And then I'm going to take the stitch marker and attach it to the middle stitch here. And then you want to make sure that that marker and that middle stitch is connected to the middle of the sweater. So the shoulder here is where you wanna connect it, right on the seam. So I'm just gonna attach it here. That kind of lays it out where you want the sleeve to be attached. Basically gonna seam along here. So we're gonna connect the sleeve all the way across to the front panel and the back panel. The way that you seam it is actually slightly different because you're attaching a casted off end, like an end that, you know, we did the, the regular cast off to a side, which is different than doing like the two cast off ends together. So I'm gonna grab the end that was connected to the sleeve. That's why, like I said, I like to leave really long ends so that I can use them to seam the sweater together. The end here is actually connected to my sleeve, so the first seam is gonna be on the front panel. How I'm gonna connect it is I'm actually going to go in between the stitches on the front panel. So instead of going underneath two, like a, a slip stitch, I'm gonna go in between and grab the little bar that is underneath here. So to see how there's like a bar between the actual stitches, I'm gonna go through that and that's how I'm gonna connect it on the actual side, so on the front or the back panel. And then with the sleeve, you can actually just go through normal like I did for the last one. Just go through like one of the knit rows, one of the knit stitches, and then that's fine. But then when you're going through the back panel, you kinda of wanna go under the bar between the two stitches. So if you kind of pull the stitches apart, you can kind of see 
that in between all of these, there are these like little bars. You'll see it once you start working on it. So you actually wanna go under that bar when you're doing these because then when you finish it, it's not gonna be connected weird. Basically, it's gonna look normal like this. I'll show you on my other sleeve that I did. You're gonna have regular stitches showing and then they don't get like ruined by the other side of the, the sleeve. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna finish this and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished seaming in the sleeves on both sides to the front and the back panel. I'm gonna seam along the front and the back panel on the side here. So all along this, and then I keep going all the way across the sleeve as well. So you're basically seaming in all the sides of the sweater now together. So when you're seaming two sides together, because we've now done two ends together, like the cast it off ends when we did the front and the back, we've done the cast off end and a side together when we did the sleeves, and now we would be doing two sides together. So you need to go through the little bars between the stitches again. Basically between a stitch, so say this is a stitch right here, you have these little bars. That is the bar that you go under when you are using your darning needle. So you do that on both sides and that way you'll avoid having any like weird kind of stitching. When you are holding your two pieces together, you can see there is kind of a bar between the stitches and you're gonna go underneath that bar. You'll find the next bar on the, on the opposite panel, on the other panel, and you're gonna go under that. So you just keep switching between panels and bars. And then once you've done that, it ends up being so you can't really see where the panel ends and where the next one begins. It's kind of a cool way to make it look like you've done the sweater in one piece when you actually have not. So as you can see, it's starting to be not really clear. Like the two stitches are just, the two panels are just kind of combining. So those stitches where you're going under the bars, they're combining in the middle. So you can't really tell unless you were like really looking, but you can't really tell where one panel begins. Not like when you, we did the top panel where you had that like indent thingy. You don't get that if you go through the bars when you're connecting sides. Keep doing this now, finish up both of the sides. And then the last thing we gotta do to finish the sweater is the button band. It's actually not gonna be a button band because I think I'm just gonna do it as like an open faced cardigan, but I want to add kind of the ribbing similar to this along the button band and around the top, like the neckline and then down. What I wanted to show you guys was how to pick up stitches. It's actually not really as hard as it looks. You kind of want to go into, at least how I do it, is I go into the first, um, like under the first stitch, so just under the Vs, and then you want to grab your yarn again, leave kind of a long tail. It doesn't have to be super long, but just so you can seam it in easily. And you want to wrap that yarn around the needle and then you just pull it through. So then you have a stitch on your needle. So I'll show you again. So go underneath the next stitch. Where's the camera? Here. Go underneath the next stitch, grab your working yarn and loop around. So you just take your working yarn, you loop it around the needle and then you pull it underneath so that you have a chain or a loop on your needle. And you're just gonna do that all the way across until you have all of the chains on your needles. So I switched to a longer needle. I think this is a more like 60 inch or something length. So I'm not using those wooden ones that I used for the rest of the sweater because you kind of want something that is long enough to be able to have the wire go through the entire frame of the sweater. Okay, so I have done the entire length of the, or whatever it's called, you know, like around the whole neckline all the way down. And I've picked up stitches all the way through. So this is where the yarn ends. This is the new working yarn. And I'm going to take the other needle, which is attached to the other end of the sweater. And I'm gonna start doing the 
rib knitting. So it's the exact same thing as you would do if you were doing regular rib knitting, um, like how we did the bottom and the arm sleeve. We stick the needle through the first loop, pull the yarn around it. It's pretty much normal. So that's a regular knit. And then you're going to flip the yarn to the other side and you're going to do a purl stitch. So it's kind of tricky to get the first loop in. I feel like it gets easier once you get going. Um, but then you do a purl stitch. And then you pull the yarn to the other side again, to the back, you do a regular knit stitch. And then you will pull the yarn to the front end. I'm sorry my nails aren't done. This is like the only time I could have filmed this video and I didn't have time to do my nails and you're going to do a purl stitch stitch. So you do knit, purl, knit, purl, like regular, normal ribbing so that the button band will look like this, like the regular ribbing that we've done for the whole sweater. When you do the knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl all the way across and you get to the other end, then you just, when you get to this end, then you just reverse and go back the other way. So you go like around the sweater, finish it to the end, the the right side of the sweater, and then go back up around. So you just keep that, that's how you complete the rows. You just go in a loop over and over. I will show you guys when I get to the, the other end so I can do the flip around. I've gone now all the way around the button band and I'm back on the right side of the sweater. That is two rows completed. So I'm now going to continue on by doing the next row. Just have to make sure you're doing the same like knits on the knit column and then pearls on the pearl column. It's hard to see it, but this first loop is a knit. And then this next one, as you can see, that is a pearl. So it's like pearl, knit, pearl. So now I'm going to take the yarn, pull it to the front. Now I'm gonna do a pearl stitch. And now this one is another knit. So switching around and I'm gonna do a knit stitch. Basically the same pattern all the way around the sweater once again. Okay, so I have finished the ribbing on the sweater and this is what it's looking like right now. I kind of messed up along this edge. I did too many. Um, so it's like kind of, you can tell it's kind of like bumpy along this and this side is a more straight. About six rows, I think, because I had extra yarn and then I just cast it off as normal. So now that that's done, the last step is going to be to seam in all of the loose threads. The first thing you wanna do is flip the sweater inside out. So then you can see all of the little threads that need to get sewn in. How I like to seam in the ends. This is my least favorite part. After seaming everything together, seaming in the ends is like the worst part of making a sweater. You just have to go through these little pearls. So you don't want to go through and make it hit the front of the sweater. You need to go through the pearls and you basically just crisscross through. I usually go up, down, and then up again and down and you keep doing that until the yarn gets, you know, until you've basically used up all of the spare yarn. At some point I do kind of turn and start going in the other direction just to make it even more secure. I don't know if it actually helps, but I've never had a sweater like unravel by using this technique. So I feel pretty confident in it. And this one, I probably don't have to go right to the end of the yarn because I've already seamed it in here. It was like when we started a new ball of yarn. And once you get like just a little bit of yarn left, I usually like to kind of tie a little bit of a knot. So I'll pull it through, but not all the way. And then I will go under the loop and just tighten it that way. And I don't really know, you probably don't need to, but I just tend to do that because I like it to be secured. I might even do it like one more time just to be absolutely secured. And then once that knot is tied, just cut the yarn right close to that knot. And that is seaming in the end. So it looks like it's been seamed in, like obviously from the inside, but when you look on the real side, like the side that, everybody can see, you can't tell that anything has been seamed in. I'm gonna do that for all of the loose ends. 
on this sweater, which is there's a ton. I don't know why this sweater has so much, but um, yeah, then the sweater will finally be done. This side of it, let me just direct with my finger, um, was a little bit bumpy because I think I did too many cast off. So it's like longer on this ribbing and then shorter on this ribbing, but I don't really care at this point because the sweater took forever for me to finish. So I'm just glad it's finally done. I'll just show you guys what it looks like on and how I would style it. But yeah, that is how I knit this really easy sweater. Okay, this is the sweater on. It fits actually okay. I thought it was gonna be too small. I mean, it's a little bit small. The sleeves are still okay. I still think it's pretty cute and I really like it. It's super warm, so probably gonna have to wait a bit. <laughs> I finished this a little late. I wanted it for early spring, but I'm probably gonna have to wait a bit and now save it for the fall. Maybe. Anyway, that's the sweater. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you are gonna try and create a similar sweater. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to follow my knitting Instagram account, which I will leave right here. Please subscribe if you would like to see more videos and I will see you in my next one.